So what is going on guys? Today I'm gonna show you how to create some glowing crystals from scratch. It's a simple but super cool exercise and in the end you can create a lot of variations with the techniques I'm gonna show you. I actually went an extra mile and added a few more elements like electricity, smoke and particles which really adds a nice touch to the crystals if you have a few more hours. And those versions are exclusive to my patrons and I left a link in the description in case you are interested to have access to this project and many more effects for your games. So without further ado, let's jump right into it and let's see some crystals in the making. We are going to need a 3D model of the crystals and then the crystal shape. And I'm using Unity 2020.3.11 with the universal render pipeline and in the package manager I have Shadagraph installed. And here on my scene I have these crystals, which are very simple to do, you just need a few minutes. And I'm going to quickly show you how I made them in Blender. So once you have Blender opened up, we want to select everything with A and we can press delete so we get a clean scene. Now let's press shift A so we can add a UV sphere. And on this bottom left corner, we can say it's 12 segments and 8 rings, which is more than enough for what we need. Then you can press S and Z to scale this up just a little bit. And the idea now is to enter in edit mode with tab. And if you select everything with A, you can press spacebar. I'm going to search for bisect. Which you can find up here in mesh, as you can see, bisect. And the idea is to click more or less around here. Then we can cut this however we want from the point we click it. Make sure down here in the panel, you turn on clear inner and you turn on fill, as you can see, it fills. I'm gonna do the same, but for the opposite side, as you can see, but this time it cuts everything out. That's because we need to unselect clear inner and turn on clear outer. And that's basically all you need to know to cut this sphere into a crystal. I'm gonna fast forward a little bit because we repeat this process a few times until we get to something that we like. Just want to mention that for the bottom part I cut this from the left, as you can see, and then from the right. Or you can simply cut it horizontally, that's fine. And then I kept on cutting this. Just make sure that the top part is a little bit more pointy. If you want, you can basically cut it however you want. I just made it a little bit pointy in the end. And once you have a shape that you enjoy, you can press S and in my case I'm gonna scale it a little bit up, like this, in the Z only. And that's pretty much it. Now in the end we just need to create some proper UVs. I'm gonna press 1 in the numpad so it goes into front orthographic view, it's very important. And I'm gonna drag a new window from this bottom left corner and up here I'm going to select UV editor. Make sure you are in front orthographic view. The idea is that we enter in edit mode, select everything with A, as you can see the UVs are MS, and we want to press U and then select project from view bounds. It will fill the whole UV area from this view. Now once again we are going to do a very repetitive process, where we basically duplicate this several times, we rotate it, we scale it down, we stretch it a little bit to the sides. Basically we try to create a cluster of crystals that we like, we make a nice arrangement. Once you have a few crystals put together like this, make sure you select everything with A and then press Ctrl A and select all transforms. So it applies correctly the scale, rotation and location. Now we can simply save this Blender file directly to the Unity project. Unity will import this automatically as an FBX and now in Unity, all we gotta do is drag this to the scene. And that's it. I'm just going to delete the other one that I made previously. And now let's focus on creating the shader. We wanna make it glow and look shiny. And we can do it by pressing with right click, go to shader and select blank shader graph. We can name it crystal shader and double click to open it up. First in the graph inspector, let's add universal as the target. 
the material can delete the workflow metallic and the surface opaque. We don't need to change anything else. What we need is to create two floats, one for the metallic and the other for the smoothness, and then turn them into a slider between 0 and 1, and connect them respectively down here to the fragment function of the shader. And then we are going to need a color, a base color for the crystals. You can push it up here, make sure it's in HDR and white with alpha at 100. And then you can connect it to the base color. Okay, so that's the very basic setup that we got here. Now the trick to make this shine and look beautiful is to use the Fresnel effect. With this node right here, we can connect it to the emission. As you have seen previously, I have three colors on the crystals. We got the base color and now we need another one for the top color and another one for the bottom color. Make sure both are in HDR mode with white as the default color. And we are going to start with the top color. We can multiply it with the Fresnel effect. So we can basically add color to this Fresnel effect and then connect to the emission. Let's save this and let's test this out by creating a material out of this shader with right click. Now I'm going to select all of the objects that make up this crystal and then drag and drop the material to the mesh renderer. And let's see what we can do with this basic setup that we have created. Well, first you can play with the metallic and smoothness properties. It will make it shinier or not so shiny. What I want to show you is that if we select the base color, for example, the blue, and you start increasing the intensity, I get this awesome glow, right? This fantastic glow only happens because in the scene I have this global volume which has a profile with the bloom effect. You can create one with a right click. If you go to volume, you can select global volume and then create a new profile. And then add bloom and whatever you want. That's why it looks so glowy, right? Another thing that I want to show you is that if we select the top color now, this one controls the Fresnel color. And as you can see, we have a second color. We have the blue and red, for example, and it looks fantastic already. With just this basic setup, you increase the intensity and you get a red glow with hints of blue. And that's so cool. Now, what if we wanted two colors, one from the top and another from the bottom? Well, for that, what we need is start with a gradient, something that makes the UVs glow in the top part and in the bottom part. So with the UV node, if we split this, the G channel, if we multiply it, As you can see, in the bottom it's dark and in the top it's white. With this we can make it shine at the top and dark at the bottom. But that's not what we want. We want this to be used with a smooth step. As you can see, we can have access only to the bottom part. A smooth step is a threshold, basically. And if we drag another line and connect it to a wine minus node, we get the opposite. And if we connect it to a smooth step, and increase a little bit the in value, we get bright at the top. As you can see, we have now separated the gradient, which means we can control two colors with this. So how do we do it? Well, first we need to create a float to control the top line. I'm going to push it up here. And another float to control the bottom line. I'm going to turn them into a slider between 0 and 1. Bottom line can have a default value of 0 0.35 and top line can have a default value of 0 0.65. Top line is this one and bottom line is for this smooth step. Now to add color to this, we already have the Fresnel, we just need to push this multiply to around here and the top color as well and multiply these two together, the smooth step and the top color. 
and then we can do the same for the bottom color. We can multiply it with the Fresnel and then multiply it with the smooth step. And then we simply need to add these two together. And as you can imagine, with this, we can control the top and the bottom colors. If you have done the UVs correctly, like I've showed you previously, you can connect this to the emission, save this, and if we go now to our shader, in the bottom color, you can select a dark blue, for example. If we increase the intensity, as you can see, it's really at the bottom, which means we can increase the line. As you can see, the bottom line now, that color really influences a little bit more of the crystals. You can make it shinier at the bottom, or another color completely different, as you can see. And there's a very nice thing, if you decrease the base color to dark, we are left only with the top color and the bottom color. As you can see now, it's kind of pink at the top. We can control the influence of this top color. We can make it shinier at the bottom. We can select another color for the top. Basically, with this setup, you can have three different colors and create some very cool and simple crystals. It's simple the process of creating these crystals and you can get a very interesting outcome. So yeah, I played with this and made quite a few variations as you can see. I then added some electric particles. I'm gonna link a tutorial for that, by the way, if you want. I also added some smoke. I'm gonna link another tutorial for that and you can pimp this out. <laughs> so I hope you have truly enjoyed. Please consider subscribing and leaving a like. If you wanna get access to this project and many other projects that you can use in your games, I left a link in the description. It's available on my Patreon page. Talking about Patreon, I want to say big thank you to each Patron that supports me. It really means a lot. And as usual, a special quick shout out to the top tier Patrons, which are Elak Frost, Alex Berg Jones, Ari Koftikian, Bradford Ermont, Kathleen Aladan, Cristobal Velasquez Valtz, David Crew, David Mydliers, Donald Thompson, Dewey Tron, Goblin Plague, Guillaume C, Holo, Hostile Mars Game, Jean Denis Polo, Jonathan Perez, Josh McCormick, Jules Klein, Lianos, Matthew Chatter, Motor Monster, Nat Sims, Oitsk, Ovi Sands, Radioactive Bullfrog, Ricardo Cruz, Tyler Fritz, Unknown Enigma, Verisuta, and Inguda. A big, big thank you goes to each one of you. You guys are awesome and your support is super appreciated. To everyone who watched this, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you have enjoyed and I really hope to see you in the next video.